Thank you guys. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you today. We have a lovely uh, set of speakers uh, with us. Please guys, come on stage. So the topic for today is really interesting indeed. Um, you know, during the last uh, World Economic Forum, it was discussed that um, our kids are probably going to work a few different professions, not a few different jobs and some of them don't really exist today. So we're going to be discussing how in this new reality educational system is or isn't relevant. So with us today we have uh, um, some lovely gen gentlemen. We have uh, Jan Reichardt from um, uh, Mendeley, uh, formerly, and um, uh, today uh, you're uh, at um, Emerge. Uh, Emerge Education, yeah, sorry. Uh, we also have uh, Alvaro, uh, San Martin from um, Udacity, uh, formerly, uh, who is also going to um, tell us more about, you know, the alternative uh, methods of education that can supplement the uh, system that we have today. And we have uh, Raul Sovgaidarsky from Upnetics, uh, a software company that also has uh, an alternative educational institution embedded, which is the IT Talents Academy. So it's a pleasure to be with you guys today. So let's start with that, you know, given how I opened uh, uh, the discussion, you know, are we ready for what's uh, uh, coming uh, in the future when it comes to the educational institutions, whether it's, you know, the um, high school level or university level and where and how they're falling short of the requirements that we need in terms of uh, education, approach, formats and content. So let's probably start with you, Alvaro. Um, I guess the, the situation right now, it's quite obvious. Uh, the reason why Udacity and other players exist is because there is something missing. And um, we are trying to help provide that gap in between the offer and the demand. And uh, I guess um, most of us have been through formal education. And uh, these days, I think the main topics that we are hearing about is how do we personalize that education how do we make it relevant uh, to what is going on in the market today? And uh, I guess uh, the new content providers, the new actors of this ecosystem are the ones that, that are bringing the innovation. Um, we would like to see actually, and I'm sure it will happen, uh, the more traditional actors like universities starting this movement too. Mm -hmm. Okay, and in terms of approach, you know, when it comes to universities, the way they prepare talent is very structured. You pick a subject, you go through a four or five or whatever term of study, and then you're ready to work. Versus what we are discussing recently, you know, the notion of lifelong learning, where you have to study and actually learn whatever you need, just that, in a focused manner, and uh, using an approach that's particularly suitable to you. Uh, so you, uh, you have, you know, this notion of nano degrees. Can you tell us a little bit more why and how they are filling this vacuum that obviously doesn't exist in, uh, uh, is uh, creating the traditional uh, educational system? Yeah, uh, Udacity introduced uh, a couple of years ago the concept of the nano degree. Uh, that is a very specific educational training uh, that helps you be prepared for what we call uh, jobs of tomorrow in the mm. end. Uh, it's a very specific uh, training program that you can do at your own pace online um, and that helps you find a job in something that is really, really on demand these days. Um, so that happened two years ago in collaboration with Google, with big players uh, in Silicon Valley. And we are seeing that many, many companies are taking that as a standard to train and also um, hire new employees to their companies because they have the knowledge that is relevant for them today. And I'll turn to Radoslav for a second. You know, the, uh, the academy that you, you run, that in essence is kind of a, a nano degree. Uh, do you think that this approach is universally applicable? Obviously it works quite well for, uh, you know, engineering or digital professions but could that be, you know, the higher education of the future? 
it certainly looks like that. Uh, if, you, if it works in the digital area uh, where my domain is, I don't see why it won't be working uh, in a biology, for example. It, it won't be the same as ours academies because you also have an academy, but it, it is basically should be applicable to each area of our life. The, the notion of four years old education as we have in Bulgaria, uh, which is quite slow and uh, old, uh, modernized once a decade or two decades, will not be uh, working in, in, it's not working today, it won't be working in the future, regardless of the domain and uh, uh, the work, it's, it just doesn't justify the needs of any workplace. So I guess yes. Uh, yeah, so um, <coughs> I'd say from, from what, I, what I observe in this market very high level, uh, what I think is happening is that traditionally you, got, you, you went to university or an education provider and you got a package of education. Right? You, you pay in some countries, in some countries you don't, but you, know, you get a package of something that uh, you know, ends maybe with a certificate, but it's, it's a packaged thing, it's a packaged experience. Um, and what I think is happening is that this is being broken up. Um, I think the traditional formal education still holds. There's still a place for a formal curriculum, a formal piece of education. Um, but, but I think we are only starting to realize what we can do is if we break apart this package and then add modular pieces on top, as it has happened in many of the other uh, uh, industries as well. Music, you go, went on and bought a CD, even though maybe you only wanted to have one song. Mm -hmm. And now it's basically on a per song basis, and people still buy CDs, by the way. So it's not either or, in my view. So I think that's one big trend that, that I'd say we see at, at Emerge Education. We, invest, we have invested in about 40 companies, uh, sm small scale, through the accelerator. And the other one is that I think, again, like if we co feel like how we felt when we went to school and university, it feels to me that compared to the other consumer industries, that the user experience in education seems broken. Right? So y people go to universities because they, in many cases, have to, and they go and take exams, but no one is really actually enjoying it. I mean, parts, yes, but not the entire experience. And so I think that's where, where is the potential for people like us here to actually improve on the user experience. Mm -hmm. Not only kind of how can we reuse uh, and, and, and create new content, but actually how can we improve the user experience of education so that when we go through education that people start to enjoy it, and, and it's up to speed to the same experience that I, for example, have you know, when, I, when I shop on Amazon or when I listen to music on Spotify. So high level, I think there's like role for technology to improve the user experience, as well as to break apart the traditionally packaged education. And this ties quite well with the notion of personalized education. So can you discuss a little bit uh, what is the definition of personalized education and how can this practically work today? Alvaro, how about you? Yeah, I, I was uh, like holding back because I love this topic and I know I could be <laughs> talking about this the entire evening. So my main experience with education has been uh, sometimes very good, sometimes really horrible, personally. Um, what I think is that it is possible to take that amazing experience I had when I was in a course that I loved and bring it to the entire education career or degree. I think it can happen, and I think it will happen, actually. Because nowadays, we have technology that allows that to happen. Because I can measure what you're learning by testing you, by seeing how you react into, for example, if you're doing an online course, I can see where are you clicking, how often are you clicking, if you're there or not if you're watching the videos, if you're not. So we have so much data that today, I, I know, I cannot, okay, but the systems that we have in place um, can predict and create personalized itineraries for you. And I think we will see this happening more and more. And uh, also, that changes everything, because uh, I have a friend that the other day told me that teachers are going to be data, data analysts, because they are going to have so much data about their students that they are going to look at the data and see, okay, this, this person looks like it's interested in this specific topic. 
I'm going to try to guide that person towards that path. But based on the data that you have. Nowadays, in, in the classroom, you don't, you don't have any data. You just have the look in their faces. So I think the personalized education area is going to totally explode in the next five years, and I would say even sooner. So yeah, and now I stop because I started talking too much. So <laughs> If I may ask, how is, how is this going to correlate with the job place of the future? Is, is it going to be a personalized job place? I hope so. You know, uh, I, I think we are seeing more and more jobs that don't fit traditional requirements. Like, I, I've seen positions that have never been invented before uh, going on in the market these days. I need a specialist for user experience and automation of uh, self-driving cars. You know, that's pretty much a personalized description. Uh, it, if, if you find that person, you know it's that role, no? And I hope that we will get there, uh, that there will be jobs for you. And actually, I think there will be uh, automated um, AI that will help you decide, OK, this is a job for you. Because I know you, and I know that you're good at that. I, I would also say um, personalized ex education has the potential to really make education successful. Yeah. Um, so th there's one case, a company uh, in, in South America uh, called Crihana. What they do is they, they provide, uh, similar to actually what Udacity does, uh, they do online courses for creatives um, to help them do, like, uh, you know, how to produce videos, how to do cre create um, creative work online. And they have done studies on the effectiveness of, of what they're what they're providing to their students, and they have shown that the people, the students who go through their courses, which is outside of formal education, um, are able to increase their monthly salary from about you know, $1,200 per month to $2,000. And that is, that is an incredibly successful model to then say, okay, actually the education, not only do I enjoy it, but it's actually also really geared towards my needs and what I, what I like to do, and it makes me commercially uh, successful. So I, I, I'd love to see more of these things happening. Yeah, and that actually relates to another topic that I want to discuss with you. You know, I, I read an article in the Wall Street Journal uh, probably a couple of weeks ago that says that, you know, half of, half of the uh, university graduates in the U.S. are not ready uh, to start a job. And the number one complaint by employers is they actually lack um, uh, critical thinking and problem-solving skills because the education is very theoretical. So the practical element actually is missing. And, and I guess that ties to, to what you just said, that you know the practical element actually, first of all, uh, makes you remember and learn the thing you're learning better, and then learn critical skills outside of the pure theory that make you ready for your next job. And I guess, again, turning, turning back to, uh, to Radoslav, uh, can, you, can you talk about you know, the, the practical elements that you're weaving in your program and actually the success of your program. Tell us how, how, why you started doing the academy and how you rate now the, the success of this endeavor. Okay, so basically the academy started like four or five years ago. Uh, it didn't start as an academy, but it was driven out of necessity. So at that time, uh, Imperial Online, another company of uh, our founders, uh, needed to go mobile, you know, everybody were going mobile, you should be there. They tried to hire a company to produce the game for uh, mo mobile devices. They gave some unrealistically long uh, periods for the developing and a price, whatever, they agreed. Three months into this, there was nothing. They hired another company, uh, the iteration was slow, uh, faster, but the result was the same. So they needed to, they came up with the idea to, to just grab people <laughs> from the street uh, and learn, learn them to code. You know, don't, they don't want to learn them uh, IT uh, in, in the notions of uh, the nowadays education in Bulgaria, because it's quite different than in the States, in the UK, or wherever. Uh, so they started a six-month 
course of education for mobile developers. As it turned out, by the third month, they actually uh, terminated the course of education and start doing the game. Six months later, they had the game, uh, which proved that for a really short amount of time, like three months, you can produce a developer. He is not an IT engineer. He doesn't have complex backgrounds like integrated schemes or whatever, but he is a developer in a particular technology set, uh, nano degree of sense. So they did it yet again with another 20 people just because they needed more developers. And after that, uh, they, they came up with the notion of the academy, the IT academy. Uh, they started uh, working with outside employers, outside of the company Imperial Online. And for five years now, it has developed over a thousand IT de uh, developers, all of which are working as developers nowadays. So the success of the academy is really great. Uh, our business, Upnetics, which is kind of a spin-off from Imperial Online, but it's different business. It's totally based on, uh, just like yours was actually in Telerik, is uh, based on those those IT talents that we acquire through the academy. So you know the work, the job market here in Bulgaria is quite terrible for developers. So what we do is we we hire, we grow internally. We have a set of mentoring programs, uh, programs that we enable people to to continue uh, their education inside the company. But at the end of the day, we take people who are switching from another profession, accountants, army guys, MMA fighters. We have it all. Uh, yeah, we uh, So, uh, and they're really successful developers nowadays. So that's the background. I see the time there, so it's. So if you have to answer, you know, the question from the title of our session, is college still worth it? Or can it change and evolve to fit the new models? What, what's your opinion? <clears throat> well, I, I, I would certainly, I mean, I'm never, let's say, a super radical person. I'd say, yes, it's certainly worth it, but it's not enough, like in many other, other cases. And w what is not enough needs to be, you know, many other, like in many other situations, be fixed by entrepreneurs in ad tech because there are so many opportunities to improve the existing system. Uh, but to me, that doesn't necessarily mean that the existing system is completely uh, mm -hmm. wrong, uh, but we certainly need to improve. So I would say yes, but it's not enough. Over, how about you? Um, in my opinion, I think that higher education ended in your 20s, and now it ends in your 90s. So we are all going to have to go through higher education again and again, uh, because Robots are going to take most of our jobs because uh, we are going to have to change location uh, because we are going to have different situations that are new and we are going to have to transform ourselves. So in my opinion, um, I think we need to redefine uh, higher education from, <laughs> from what we are used to. Yeah, and if you, if you ask me, let's ask myself the same question. <laughs> I think that, you know, higher education should definitely be there but the model should change probably should be shorter and I think still you know universities are probably one of the critical sources of content and knowledge and research but they just should present that knowledge and research uh, in different ways uh, again uh, more modularized uh, more tailored towards uh, uh, you know the uh, needs uh, and the requirements of uh, particular people uh, versus, you know, a package program that is designed for mass production, pretty much, because this is it. I mean, universities and schools are designed for mass production, which was okay, but today is not enough because of those new professions. Um, any final words uh, uh, with, uh, with respect to uh, this topic? I, I think it's, uh, like you said, a subject that you can never really wrap up. Uh, but um, uh, I think there's a lot of opportunity for disruption of, um, of, of this business and for innovation that should hopefully drag uh, higher education institutions so that they are pressed to evolve and adapt to the new realities. 
So thanks uh, for being uh, our guest today Thank you. and for the lovely chat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.